Thanks for dropping in. In this video, I swap a half decent 4 core 4 thread Ryzen 3200G and a pretty decent 4 core 8 thread Ryzen 4300GE for a really horrible Bristol Ridge 2 core 2 thread A6 9500E CPU. I spend a disproportionate amount of time staring at non booting PCs and I come to the dramatic conclusion that when a chipset manufacturer says a certain chipset won't work with certain CPUs, the chances are they won't. I recently bought a couple of PCs off of eBay, as I seemed a good price, and I'm beginning to think about Windows 10 support ending at the end of the year and needing a few PCs around that can legitimately run Windows 11, rather than unofficially running it. This first one is a Xena pre-built, but it uses standard components and has a commercial MSI A520MA Pro AM4 motherboard, a Ryzen 4300GE APU and 8GB of RAM, which I got for around £80. The second is this Lenovo pre-built, which is a V55T-15ARE. Catchy name, which uses custom parts, but is running a Ryzen 3200G, 8GB of RAM, and also has a 256GB NVMe SSD. Both of these motherboards use the 3rd gen 500 series chipsets. The AM4 platform has been going strong since around 2016 or 17, and the range of supported CPUs is massive, although it's now becoming the budget option as AMD has moved on to the AM5 for its latest and greatest chips. Due to the large number of AM4 CPUs, some motherboards dropped earlier CPU compatibility when upgrading the BIOS to allow for later CPU compatibility, and later chipsets didn't support the earlier CPUs at all, officially, apparently due to not having enough space on the BIOS chips for all the different CPU info. Here is a rough at launch compatibility chart. This is just a generalisation, as actual support depended on the motherboard, manufacturer and BIOS version. The 300 and 400 series supported the pre-Zen Bristol Ridge A series APUs out of the box, but the 500 series officially drop support for these along with the 1st and 2nd gen Ryzen CPUs, although there are exceptions. For example, the X570 chipset does officially support the 2nd gen Ryzen 2000s. If we look at general support on the later BIOS versions, we can see that all three chipset generations are able to support the latest CPU architectures and generations, but earlier CPU support is sketchy. Therefore, overall, depending on the BIOS version and a bit of luck, the 300 and 400 chipset generations can be made to work with all CPU generations whereas the 500 series has this gap with the early generations. But does it really? I decided to put this to the test. Does official support and actual support correspond? Can I get an A6 9500E Bristol Ridge APU? I bought for eBuy here in the UK for a whopping £1.98p, which is possibly the cheapest new from a shop CPU you can currently buy, working in a 500 series motherboard. Let's find out. First up was the Lenovo pre-built. I first just turned it on to check all was working fine with its original CPU, in this case a Ryzen 3 3200. G. And yes, all present and correct. I then set to removing the CPU. From the date code, we can see that this particular CPU was made in the 18th week of 2020, so the end of April, beginning of May 2020. What's a bit strange is that the A6-9500D, a much older CPU that we have, was manufactured in the 26th week of 2021, and as we'll see in a bit, even the 4300G in the other PC was manufactured before this A6-9500E. I therefore wonder why several generations into Ryzen, the at best very weak 9500E is still being made. Some old silicon stock maybe? Some specific use case? Please let me know in the comments if you have any idea. Anyway, in the A6-9500E went. This is just a dual core two thread chip with a Radeon R5 integrated GPU. A bit of thermal paste was added and the heatsink replaced. and upon turning it on, nothing. The system was on, in that the lights were on, and the fans spinning, but no post. So the 500 series board in this Lenovo pre-built has dropped support for early AM5 CPUs. So next up was the Xena system. Cable management was a bit interesting in this system, making it quite hard to get to the CPU mount. So ultimately I abandoned my efforts and just took the whole motherboard out, making it much easier. 
On initial boot, all was working fine and the Ryzen 4300GE in the system was detected. The CPU was removed, and as mentioned earlier, even this Zen 2 based APU was manufactured prior to our A6 9500E CPU. Why did they continue manufacturing that CPU for so long? Anyway, the A6 9500E was placed in, and upon turning on, nothing. Completely dead this time, not even powering on. No post, nothing at all. I had another A6 9500E. At £1.98, I might as well get a couple, hey. So I tried the second one with exactly the same results. So I went back to the 4300GE and all worked fine again. I've never had it before where a PC didn't even power on with a socket correct but not recognised CPU. Usually it powers on and fails to recognise the CPU, so no post. Has anyone seen this behaviour before or know a reason why it might happen? Please leave any comments and thoughts below. So there we have it, two 500 series socket AM4 motherboards and neither work with early AM4 CPUs, just like we've been told. Who would have guessed, eh? Please like and subscribe. 98% of viewers are not subscribed, so please do subscribe, it would really help out the channel. Also, please leave any comments below, particularly if you know why the A6 9500D was manufactured for so long, and why the MSI A520M A Pro motherboard didn't even power on with this CPU in place. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.